Hello, everyone, and welcome back to what is already going to be our first track session. And for our first track session, I have the great pleasure to um, introduce Dr. Obey, who is presenting from Malaysia today. Dr. Obey is a PhD in artificial intelligence holder, professional trainer, digital marketer, and somebody who has an extensive uh, knowledge around deep learning, machine learning, and learning algorithms with a well-demonstrated track record of over 17 years in different various IT industries. He is a certified trainer. He conducts numerous training courses around big data, machine learning, and AI. And also he received his PhD uh, at the International Islamic University in Malaysia uh, and Taylor's University Lakeside Campus. Today, Dr. Abey is gonna join us to explore the intersection of big data and the metaverse. So a completely interesting and actual topic. And I'm actually personally very much looking forward to learning around that relationship and seeing how that is gonna change the world as well. Dr. Abey, it's a, it's a great pleasure to uh, have you with us um, during Big Data Days. Um, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for introducing me. And it's really a pleasure and honor to be with you again. This is my second year with, uh, with Big Data Days. I participated last year. It was about artificial intelligence and machine learning. And this year is going to be about the big data and the metaverse, which is the intersection between big data and metaverse. We are going to talk about uh, kind of awareness. We are going to go through the introduction about the big data, working as a trainer, I always have this question, what is big data? And company always ask, asking whether the data that they have is considered as a big data or not. So I'm going to go into detail about the understanding of the big data. And then as long as we have the big data, then we have to know what is the big data infrastructure uh, and how companies they have to build an infrastructure to work on their data. And then we will look at the, um, the connection or the intersection between artificial intelligence and big data. And then we will look at the Industrial Revolution 4.0, Industrial Revolution 5.0, which I personally believe because of those industrial revolutions, now we are using the applications of the big data. We are working on the big data. We are using the AI. And in the future, I believe we are moving to the metaverse. Metaverse is going to be something to do daily. Metaverse is going to be like the new technology to come to work with still need more time we believe the metaverse is going to be started like to use it in our daily routine by 2026 uh, some of the statistics say by 2030 metaverse could be like on high demand like how ai on high demand currently then we will look at the understanding of the metaverse the metaverse uh, market map which are about the companies now they are using the metaverse then we will look at the challenges and opportunities for the big data and the metaverse. And then we will end up by the intersection among all. So thank you so much for having me. And I would like also to welcome all the participants. It's really a pleasure and honor for me again to be among all of the presenters and all of the audience. Okay, all right. So first of all, what is the big data? I have been working as a trainer for the last three to four years. I have trained more than 3,000 people for the, in the field of the big data, artificial intelligence, to work as data scientists, to work as data analysts. So always they ask me, what is the big data or what is the definition of the big data? So if we search in the books of the big data, if we search in even online, if we look at the vlogs, if we look at the blogs, I don't think we have a definite definition of the big data. Big data, it is all about the facts. And that, those facts, what make the data that we have to be considered as a big data. And when it comes to the fact of the big data, it is a quite also vary from one book to another. It's a quite vary from one blog to another. Some they say big data is the data that comes with the three Vs. We call them the Vs of the big data, which are the facts of the, of the data to be a big data. Some others, they say the, the big data is the data that comes with those five Vs. So I'm going to share with you what are those fees about. And based on my personal practice on the big data, I also provide cons uh, consultants. I also work on the data of the companies to provide their models, solutions. 
So I'm going to share with you the definition of the big data or the understanding of the big data, big data based on our practice, based on the practical part. Okay, so talking about those Vs, so let's look at those, the Vs of the big data. Let's look at those five Vs. So the first V of the big data is considered as the volume, which is the size of the data. All right, now the size of the data, I don't think we can handle it manually, even we as individuals. If we look at the data that we receive every day, it's considered as a huge amount. We cannot handle the data manually, or we cannot like even remember what did we receive through our mobile device like three or four days ago because of the huge amount of data that we're receiving. And we are talking about ourselves as individuals. So what about companies? What about business? What about private sector, government sector, and so on? So this is the first one, which is the volume. So if you have the data that you are working on or the data that you have, it comes with this, uh, with this B, so we can consider as this is one of the factors of the data that you have to be a big data. The second one, which is the velocity. Velocity is about the speed that data accumulated. Data accumulated now in a very, in a very, in a very high speed. And if you look at our surround, like nowadays, every device that we have generating data, every device that we have accumulating data, our cars generating data, our watches generating data, even currently the appliances at our, our house is also generating data. So it's like data is everywhere and every device that we use generating data. So that's why the data accumulated in a very high speed time. The third, the third V, it is the veracity. Veracity, it is about the, it is about the, the quality of the data. All right, it is about the, how good is the data that we have? There's another term also comes with the, uh, with the big data, which is the which is the good data. So good data is considered as the sorry, yeah. Good good the big data is considered as the good data is considered as a part of the big data, which is the data that is good to get insights from. Not all the data that we have it is considered as good to get uh, to get insights, to get solutions, to get value from that data. So. That's why sometimes we remove the data. Sometimes we like we neglect some of, the, some of the data to focus on the data that it is related to the purpose that we are working on to get those insights or to, to solve the, the to solve the problems or to make recommendations. The fourth value of the data it is the fourth the fourth V of the data is considered as a value. Value it is about about can we generate value or can we get a value from the data that we have. Value can be can be turning that data to generate money. We can turn it into money, like how how companies and businesses they are trying to improve their profit, improving improving their sales and so on. And at the same time, value is considered as the services that we can get from the data, improving the infrastructure of the countries by using that data, improving, for example, the the healthcare system, improving the education system improving other infrastructure of the country based on working on the data. So that's why now governments are working on the data. Governments now even allocating a part of the annual budget to invest in the big data because, because currently improving the infrastructure of the country, it is, cannot be improved without working on the big data, without investing in the big data. Talking about the infrastructure, like a few years ago, we used to talk about buildings, universities, hospitals, highways, trains, everything is related to, const to construction. Currently, to improve the infrastructure of the country, we need to work on the big data and we government, they need to be aware of the big data and this is worldwide and they have to invest in the big data to improve the infrastructure of the country. All right, and then the, the fifth V, it is considered as the variety. Variety, it is about the formats of the data that we have. When we talk about the formats of the data that we have, we talk about the structure and the unstructured data. I like the, the one of the questions that uh, Mr. William, William shared just now in his speech, which is about talking, the, the question is what, was about what is the percentage of the unstructured data that we have currently? It was said based on our research, it was said that 80% of the, of, the, of the data that we have or we are dealing with is considered as unstructured data. Maybe this is the, the answer. I'm giving you the answer of that question. All right. So you can see that the amount of the data, unstructured data, 
is huge currently that we deal with. Some, some books related to big data, they call it the messy data because it is unstructured data. And when we talk about the unstructured data, it means the raw data that we have. All right. The raw data that we have, it means like the data that we have now in our devices, like we have media, we have all the photos, videos, and even those photos and videos, they come in different, different formats. And we have PDFs, we have Microsoft Word uh, documents and many other formats. The structured data is considered as the data that, that it comes into, into rows and columns. All right, like the data that we can, we can read by using the Excel sheet. The data that comes in the format, which is .csv, comma separated values. And beside that, also we have the semi-structured data. Semi-structured data is considered as the data it is. It is not really structured. One of the format of the of that data it is the JSON format. All right. So those are the the Vs of the big data. And if you search online, some others they say big data is considered as the data that comes with the ten Vs, seven Vs, eight Vs. So every author, everyone believe that big data could come with the different facts. So anyway, so talking about those facts, definitely if you have those Vs in the, on, in the data that you are working on, then the data that you are working on is considered as the big data. But it is still, I believe it's still quite confusing. What are the right Vs of the big data? So my personal understanding and my personal share about the big data, I believe big data is the data that we cannot read by the Excel sheet. Currently, Excel sheet can handle 1 million 24 K rows, number of rows. So if the data that you have cannot be read, which, which means the data that you have comes into more than 1 million 24 K rows, then that data is going to be considered as a big data. All right? Because you cannot handle the data by the Excel sheet. You cannot even read the data by the Excel sheet. Sometimes the data that you have is still considered as below 1 million 24 K rows. But the problem that you have with the data cannot be solved by the Excel sheet, cannot be handled by the Excel sheet. Definitely, Excel sheet, Excel sheet comes with the limitation. All right. So if Excel sheet couldn't help, couldn't solve the problems that you have with the data that you are working on, then that data is going to be considered as a big data. This is based on our practice, based on our the practical part working on the data. And at the same time, definitely any unstructured data is going to be considered as a big data because we need to structure the data. We need to find a way to, to, to have the data to be into rows and columns. And currently, it is very normal to deal with millions. Sometimes we deal with the billions of rows. We deal with the company for the e-commerce. Those, they have e-commerce sites. We have millions, sometimes billions of records related to the customer, related to their products, related to their, like, like it's, it's easy to have one billion row if, if they are running a business for the last five years. Okay, so this is the real understanding of the big data. I hope it is, is clear. And then the question is, so as long as we have this huge amount of the, of the big data and we have, Sorry, let's say we have this a huge amount of the rows of the data, or we have this a huge amount of the data generated every day. So how we are going to deal with the data? And as long as the data, as long as just now we said 80% of the data that we have is considered as a messy data, right? So we need to find a way to, to structure that data, all right? And then after structuring the data, definitely we need to find a way to archive the data. And after archiving the data, Definitely companies, they want to analyze the data to get those insights from the data. And after analyzing the data, they want to build models to forecast, uh, maybe to forecast things to see what is going to be their profit, what is going to be their sales. At the same time, they want to use that uh, analysis to, to maybe to build um, a marketing campaign and many other purposes. All right. So... I think we, we are living in the era, I can say we are living in the era of the cloud. Everything is on the cloud. And it was said that cloud is the gut send to those people in the field of the big data. So our recommendation and our best advice for companies, for even a startup, when they are going to start working on the data, they can use those the cloud services. And the understanding about the data, first of all, we have to understand something we call it data ingestion data ingestion which which means the data that coming from the the main source like for example company 
they have a website, they are selling products or they are uh, providing uh, services online. So they have a lot of sales. So the data come, coming from the website, all right? Manufactured, their data coming from their machines. Uh, banks, their data coming from all the customers. So all of that data is considered as a raw data. So we need to build an infrastructure to collect the data from those sources. And then after collecting the data, we need to find a way to archive the data. And archiving the data, it is not only about to have a space, to have a safe space to archive the data. We need also to structure the data. Because without structuring the data, we cannot work on the data. Most of our tools, most of our analysis, the programming language, the algorithms, working with the structure, structure data. And structure data it means the data that come coming into rows and columns. Okay, so the second part of the infrastructure, definitely we need to find, we need to use whatever tools available currently to structure the data. And then after that, we can move on to something we call it data lake or data warehousing. So to archive the data in the structure way and companies, they can start working on analyzing the data whenever they need. It doesn't mean they have to do it daily. Some companies, some companies they do it monthly, they do it every six months based on their data flow, based on the amount of the data that you have daily. And then after that, definitely they can build models and those models is going to be based on all the algorithms that we have. We are going to talk about it in the next slide with the help of the AI uh, domains to work on the data to build those models. All right, talking about, about the clouds, there are many services currently available, like the one that by Microsoft Azure, the one by AWS, the, the Google Cloud Platform, and many other providers. We believe this is the best way, and this is, can be also for the security reason, can be it is a better. This is, we can consider it as the safest way to work on the data and to archive the data. All right, so before we talk about the, the help of the AI, so just now we say the infrastructure of the data. So what kind of science or, or what kind of like job or who are those that are going to work on this data ingestion, data archiving, data structure, data structure the data to get insights from the data? We have, we have those recent like emerge for the last 10 years we talk about data science and we talk about data engineering. And those, they are in the, in the field of the data engineering, they work as a data engineer. And those, they are in the field of the data, data science, they work as a data scientist. Data engineer, they are going to work on their raw data. They are going to find a way to collect the data from all the main sources. And they are going to find a way to structure the data. They are going to do all the work for data scientists, preparing the data for data scientists. And data scientists, they are going to work on the data. They are going to solve the issues of the data, the structured data. They are going to analyze the data. And at the same time, they are going to build the models based on the AI algorithms that are currently available to, uh, to work on the data. All right. So we talked about AI. We talked about algorithms. We talked about those data scientists that use the AI. So what is the... What is the is like the intersection or what is the relation between artificial intelligence and the big data? Definitely, AI algorithms or the AI current domain going to help to get the insights from the data, going to help also to automate finding those insights, going to get all the uh, the pattern from the data, the data, and those patterns going to be helped to build whatever model that we are working on. So what are the current domains then of the, of the artificial intelligence working on the big data? The, the, those, some of those current domains, one of them, it is the machine learning algorithms. And I think also Mr. William just now mentioned about the chat GBT, mentioned about also some applications of used by the artificial intelligence. When it comes to machine learning, machine learning also, now machine learning is considered as uh, as uh, considered as a field of artificial intelligence, machine learning mainly uh, comes into uh, supervised machine learning, unsupervised machine learning, semi-supervised machine learning, and reinforcement learning. So when we talk about supervised machine learning, it means we are talking about forecasting. It means we are talking about building a predictive model. So all the predictive models being built based on the algorithms that under the supervised machine learning type. 
We have the unsupervised machine learning. Unsupervised machine learning about those algorithms we use to cluster the data to have a better understanding about the data. All right. I think you have heard about some an application or a model that related to customer segmentation. Customer segmentation, we use it for the marketing campaign. Companies, they use it for their marketing campaign, which is to, to cluster or to segment the customer based on, based on features, based on some facts for them, for those companies to build a better uh, marketing campaign. All of those uh, types of models, definitely many other, many other models under the under this type of the machine learning and all of those and by using the algorithms under the unsupervised machine learning. Then we have the semi-supervised semi machine learning. When you talk about the semi-supervised machine learning, it means we are talking, we're talking about the combination between supervised machine learning and unsupervised machine learning. We said most of the data that we have is considered as, 80% of the data that we have that considered as messy data. Messy data, it means the data considered as unlabeled. So we, have, we are trying to find a way to label the data that we have by using the semi-supervised machine learning. And then the last one, it is the reinforcement learning. Reinforcement learning, it is about building a model and that model is going to learn by itself. It's going to learn from the mistake. The model going to take an action based on the purpose that that model was built for, going to take an action on the, uh, on that, based on that model and going to learn from that action, whether that action it was right or wrong. Some of the applications of the reinforcement learning, you can see now in the auto driving car, we can see like many applications also like related to the drone and auto pathing, those are under the reinforcement learning. Then the second domain of the artificial intelligence is a deep learning. Deep learning is considered as, I would say deep learning is considered as a subfield of the machine learning, if I can say that because it is all about the artificial neural network, artificial neural network algorithm it is influenced by the human brain, by the neuron and the, and, uh, and the human brain, it works in that way. And now we have many hidden layers. So that's why we, the learning is going to be deeply and the results are more promising. The good thing about deep learning, deep learning, it is about dealing with the really huge amount of data. And we are towards data that is going to be always an increase, data is going to exponentially increase. We are moving to the 5G, we are moving to the 6G, I think in five years from now. So the data is going to keep increasing. So deep learning, it is considered taking the advantage of the machine learning when the data increase, the model will keep improving the result. The third model or the third, sorry, the third domain under the artificial intelligence, it is the NLP, which is natural language processing. And this is all about to understand the, the patterns and to understand the, uh, the insights and to work on and to understand how a human using the language. Definitely just now, Mr. William also mentioned about the chat GBT. Chat GBT is considered as one of the application based on the natural language processing. And we are towards the chat GBT-5 by the end of this year, we believe chat GBT-5 is going to be equivalent to the human intelligence. And this is what we are looking for. Talking also about chat GBT, it was quite interesting uh, by Mr. William just now. We believe all of those generative tools by AI, AI generative tools going to be the soft skill in the future. And it's like for those who are like, using those, those uh, AI tools, Definitely, they can see how efficient they are in the, in the work, in the work environment currently. And for those who still didn't use those AI tools, in the future, definitely, they need to use it and they are going to be forced to use it to work more efficient. All right, the other domain of the artificial intelligence is computer vision. Computer vision means we are going to deal with the, with the graphics. We are going to deal with the images. We are going to deal with the videos. We are going to deal all the visual contents. And from that visual content, we are going to get insights. We are going to convert that visual content to a data, and then we are going to work on the data. And then this is all many applications that related to this domain. We have the image classification. We have the, the, we have the pattern recognition. Some of the applications, currently, we have them in the car, in the auto-driving car. And they, 
I think something they call it, they call it lane assistant, lane detection. This is, can be considered as the applications of the computer vision uh, working on the data coming from the visual content. All right, the last one, it is the robotics. Robotics it is about all of those machines that they are currently learning from a human. So in the future, they are going to work alongside with the human to do the daily routine. Some of those applications currently we see, all right? I think now, like we, we notice that if, if you enter a restaurant, you might not find the waiter or waitress. You are going to find a machine, going to serve you, going to provide the food, and also to, to take uh, your order. In manufacturers, we are going to see a lot of robotics. They are going to replace a human. And this is what the, the Industrial Revolution 5.0 about. We are moving from the Industrial Revolution 5.0, which is considered as the current Industrial Revolution. We are moving to the Industrial Revolution 5.0. So talking about those, Industrial Revolution 5.0 and Industrial Revolution 5.0, uh, what are those industrial revolution about? Just a quick one. Industrial revolution 4.0, it is all about digitalization and automation. And because of the digit digitalization, currently we have a huge amount of data because everything become digital. Can, uh, governments, companies, they are moving to have everything to be digital. So that's why we have a huge amount of data. We have the big data and having that big data, we cannot handle the data manually. So that's why we are towards the automation, to work on the data automatically. Automation, it means using the artificial intelligence applications, algorithms to work on the data. All right, moving towards uh, Industrial Revolution 5.0, which is all about big data and IoT, Internet of Things. It is all about using the robot or using the applications of the artificial intelligence to work alongside with the human to achieve the daily routine and to be like to be more efficient and to be more precise in our work environment and in our and our and on the things that we do daily. All right. So then that is about the the artificial intelligence. That that is about the big data. Then a little bit we are going to go uh, to the future, which is talking about the metaverse. Metaverse. It is about creating. It is about having something we call it the new universe all right it is a it is a virtual world okay and that virtual world is going to be built based on the technology of artificial but technology of sorry the uh, uh, augmented reality the virtual reality with the help of the machine learning artificial intelligence deep learning computer programming language and big data to create that new virtual world which we call it the a new universe. And we believe metaverse is going to be the next generation of the interaction. First of all, it's like what is going to be, what is going to make the metaverse successful or how sure we are, we, that we are going to use the metaverse or, going, or the technology of the metaverse is going to be successful and is going to be on demand in the future. If you look at ourselves currently, I don't think we are interested in text. If we have a message, if we have a, a, a class, or if we have to learn by reading, by using text, I don't think we are going to be interested comparing if we look at the graphics. If we look at images, we are going to be more interested to continue reading, or we are going to be more interested to learn from that graphics. If we are going to have a video, then it's going, we are going to be more even interested to listen. To the, to the video or to learn through those uh, graphics, either images or videos. So what about if we are going to have a platform or if we are going to have an environment that we not only we are going to look at as a graphics, but we can also interact, all right? Metaverse going to provide us that virtual world and that virtual world, it's all about unique graphics, interesting graphics, and then we can also interact with with that environment, we are going to have the devices, the devices going to help us to interact in that environment. So that's why we call metaverse, it is the next generation of interaction. Even like our meetings, like for example, big data days, 
having this uh, virtual conference, we believe in the future is going to be is going to have one of the platform based on the metaverse or big data is they can also in the future, which is also advisable to have their own metaverse platform to deliver the those uh, talk. And it's going to be more interactive between the speaker among the speakers and the audience. All right, so what is the expectation of using the metaverse? So based on the uh, statistics of last year, it was said that people with the age of 16 to 64 years old, they spend almost seven hours, six hours, 80, uh, 58, sorry, 58 minutes uh, work using the internet, all right? Then, it was believed that by the year of 2026, that 25% of those people or 25% of the population worldwide going to spend at least one hour in the metaverse. And when we talk about the metaverse, maybe the, the, you have heard about the metaverse, maybe you are familiar with the metaverse, but I believe most of the applications or most of the knowledge about the metaverse it, when it comes to games, right? A lot of those people into gaming, they are using the metaverse and it's been there for like almost like five, I think I think five to 10 years. But recently it has um, become high tech and become into like uh, uh, high, t high technology to use the metaverse. And now we, are, we can see like some of the companies they are using metaverse for their marketing, all right? And then step by step, we believe in the future, Metaverse is going to be a replacement of the, the way that we live or is going to be the replacement that the way that we are work uh, currently. So we are going to do everything in the Metaverse. We are going to do our daily work in the Metaverse. We are going to have the entertainment in the, using the Metaverse. We are going to learn through the Metaverse platforms. We are going to earn also through the Metaverse platform. All right. So... What about the companies that are currently using the metaverse or practicing the metaverse? So those are some of the companies that are recently using the metaverse. And you can see at the column on the, on the left side, which is under the experience. So those companies, they are experiencing the, the metaverse and they are using the metaverse and, and their website and they are using it for either for marketing or for gaming or for some purposes based on what each company is doing. The second column, which is a discovery, those companies currently discovering the uh, the metaverse, and also they are uh, they are having their own platform and they are developing those platform. And then the second two columns, which are the creator economy and the spatial computing, those companies they are providing us the the tools, providing us a way to convert our object to be into two D, to be into three D, and to start building a metaverse, or at least to start practicing how to work with the metaverse and then the following column which is the decentralized we believe in the future we are going to work with the w3 which is the web3 and that that web3 it was said is going to be permissionless so we are not going to uh, our content is not going to be owned by the current companies we are going to be the owner of the contents so and we are going to have to have them all into graphics. We are going to have them into 2D, and we are going to have our content into 3D. And that is also about the metaverse. So that's why there is a, a huge collaboration between the metaverse and the, the Web3. Then the following column, which is the human uh, interface. Those are about the companies that are currently providing devices, providing uh, tools. We can use them to be in that a new universe to see the technology of the metaverse. And then the last one, which is the infrastructure, those companies currently are providing the cloud computing, providing the algorithms, providing all the tools that can be used to build that platform. All right. So talking about this technology, about the metaverse, so then what is going to be the challenges or what are currently the current challenges? And we are going to, uh, talk about the opportunities. All right, I have those challenges. And before talking about those challenges, I believe the main challenge currently, it is the cost. So the cost is quite high 
So that's why uh, we can see the, the movement toward this technology. It is it's a quite slow. First of all, the devices are quite expensive. And at the same time, to build that platform and to start also companies to start to invest in the, in the metaverse or to use that the technology, it is also considered as expensive. So, so that's why it's going to take time to be to be that common this is first second also we need to we need to have a better internet service we need to have a faster internet service we need to have better graphics we need to have more efficient uh, devices to work on the to work to you to be used in the in the and the technology of the metaverse and then beside those main uh, challenges. We have the challenge of the reputation and identity metaverse, metaverse challenge. All right. So now we are dealing. We are dealing together. Even now we are having the we are having the the virtual meeting. But we can look at each other, right? And we are using our real identity, real faces uh, to to interact with each other. But in the metaverse, we are going to use av avatars. We are, can also design our own avatar, design our own personality based on the way that we like. So the identity is going to be uh, is a, quite a challenge. So we believe that in the future, we are going to have a, a way to, uh, to develop the rules for maintaining the identity and the reputation in the metaverse. Data and security, definitely, when it comes to this, uh, this platform, when it comes to this technology, it's going to be a huge amount of data going to be generated and it's going to be involved also to develop this technology. So we need to have also a new mechanism to work on the security of the data. Currency and the payments. When it comes to the metaverse, most of the current uh, platforms available uh, for the metaverse, they use the cryptocurrency and the cryptocurrency become quite common for the last, I believe, for the last 10 years. We might have like a currency used in the metaverse or we might have like a kind of currency to be used in each metaverse platform. So definitely there is a way or we should have a way to maintain that part. Other challenge is the ownership and the property. So just now we mentioned about the W3, the Web3. We mentioned that we are going to have permissionless, so we are going to be the owner of the of the content. I think you have heard about the NFT, the non fungible talk token, which is to maintain the copyright of our content. We believe in the in the future by using the uh, technology of the metaverse, we are going to have a lot of graphics, a lot of content, and then we need to maintain the ownership of those contents so we can use the NFT. But in the future, definitely, we are going to have like we need we need to have like more way, more ways to maintain our content. Then the rest of the challenges like a community and the on the network, and then the time and the the space. Uh, based on the, my recent uh, my recent research about the metaverse, they are worried also about the time because it's like. Working in the metaverse, like for, for example, you want to, to do your work in the metaverse. Like currently, when we are work, when we working for people or we are working in a company, so we have a time, right? We work, we can work like from nine to six or maybe like eight thirty to five thirty. But in that, in, in the technology of the metaverse, is like we can we can enter at any time, or maybe we can spend even longer hour. And because of the interaction, some say it's like you, we might spend more longer time. We might get addicted to it. So we need to work on this challenge. We need to find a way to maintain or mechanism to maintain the number of hours to be spent in this technology. All right, so these are the challenges. So what are the opportunities? So talking about the opportunities, when it comes to, when it comes to the big data, artificial intelligence for those, uh, just now we mentioned data engineer or data scientist. We believe by the year of 2026, we are going to have like uh, 11.5 million job opportunity to be available to work in the field of the big data and artificial intelligence. While in the, in the 2026, we are going to have only 25% of the population to start people into, into the, people into big data, they are working, on, working only on data scientists, but people into metaverse, 
they can do whatever they are doing currently, all right, in their daily routine, they can do it in the metaverse. So we believe, definitely there is no statistic so far about the number of jobs going to be generated by the metaverse, but we believe the number of the jobs is going to be much more than this number, than 11.5 million. And uh, as I mentioned to you, by the year 2026, we can see like uh, a lot of applications going to be available in this technology. And towards 2030, we believe it's going to be uh, more common to, to be used in our daily routine. All right, so before we end, what, are, what is the inter intersection then by the, but among the artificial intelligence, big data, and the metaverse? So even the definition of the metaverse, it is all about to use all of this technology, to use the big data, to use artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, computer programming, language, computer vision, to create that, to create that, uh, um, that platform, which is the metaverse platform. And then these are some of the intersection, which is the intelligent avatar. AI is going to work on the graphics and generating that avatar personalization, which is all the sentiment analysis and understanding those people and the uh, and the metaverse platform, natural language processing, and LP, which is the one that we mentioned just now. AI, we are using we are using that AI domain to work on the data. Then in the metaverse is going to be based on the communication between those people and the metaverse, object recognition, content creation, an autonomous agent and analytics and optimization. I think currently all of those AI tools, AI generative tools, they are involving in all of these technology. They are still quite new, especially when it comes to graphics and contents. And we believe in the coming uh, few years, we are going to see more better models and we are going to see more accurate and more interesting models. All right, so I believe we are towards to end. Then I'm going to share with you a video and this video, please allow me to share it with you. It's only for two minutes. This is one of the, of the people that using currently the metaverse. It was said that whatever we cannot do in real life, we can do it in, in the metaverse. And it was said also, whatever you can imagine, you can do in the metaverse. So when it comes to the metaverse technology, there is no limitation. But whatever is our imagination about can be done in the metaverse. All right, so I'm going to leave you in the video.
Dr. Obey, I think um, the, the sound is very um, um, limited, but um, I'm quite sure that we're going to share a link with the video um, so that we can uh, review that again. All right. OK. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for allowing me to share those slides. And we're looking forward also to collaborate in the metaverse. We are looking for something that's related to the education. We believe uh, metaverse is going to play a good role, a major role in the education. Thank you. Great. Thanks so much. Absolutely. It's an absolute pleasure to have you. And um, we still have around four or five minutes to discuss some questions. Yes, please. Um, I saw a couple of questions coming in, so if it's okay, I would like to um, moderate those in from most popular to, um, first. Um, the first question is coming in from Shuba. Um, the question is, in research work, what is the size of big data, of a data set? All right. So the size of the data, as we mentioned just now, first of all, if to call the, da the data that we are working on a big data, so it should be more than 1 million of rows uh, that cannot be handled by the, Excel, by the Excel sheet, all right? Or at least the insights or the problems that we want to solve with that data cannot be handled by the Excel sheet. So we need to use AI algorithms. We need to use computer programming language like Python programming language to get those insights from the data. Yeah. We need to use is, is it fair to say that basically if it cannot be processed on a regular... Uh, commercial computer that we are talking about big data? We can say that as well, yeah, definitely. Good, thanks. Very good question. Then a second question that came in, I think this is always a very interesting question. Let me project it on the screen is, can you elaborate more on the privacy concerns when it comes towards the collection and analysis of data within the meta version? I think what well, this is specifically referring to um, in all the, the pictures you're yeah. seeing right now with um, uh, Meta and, and Facebook and all the, the, the personal avatars people are making, where's the line in terms of when it comes towards data privacy? Okay, all right. So when it comes to data privacy and the metaverse, I think we are still in the very early stage. So we are looking at like uh, a new tools and new also, government they have to take an action. Um, we are going to like to look at those uh, committees to develop a models to to provide the the data security, data privacy. Uh, it's a new technology. It's in everything is in new. So um, we are looking for those models to be to be developed. It was said that as long as like you are going to be anonymous in the metaverse, so uh, it's like, why are you caring? It's not like when we are using currently the social media. We are using the social media with our real faces, right? With our real yeah. data, with our real location. And the metaverse can be can be like unknown. But still, we believe like in the future because we are going to use, to use it for work, for education, for many other purposes. So we should have like a, a sort of uh, data privacy. Very good. I have another very interesting question lined up, um, and that question is coming from Mohamed Izzat. Um, how will the metaverse transform business and industries? Are we looking more for a short or more for a long-term projection? Okay, all right. So if you ask me personally, I believe it's like everyone is going to move to this technology. Because of what? Because of the interaction, all right? So... Companies, they are going to use the metaverse for, for, for their marketing. Currently now companies, they use the marketing based on maybe videos, based on uh, posters. But if they use the metaverse, then the customers or the clients, they are going to be more interested to buy from them or to subscribe for their services. All right. So it's going to be definitely, it's going to be a long term. And it's going to be the new way of living our life. And even for us also as individuals, we are going to be more interested if we are going to see that kind of interaction. All right. Whether if we do we do the shopping online or we do education or we work, we earn, and so on. Interesting. Very good. I uh, I fully agree with you there. It's um, but you should have I think both a short term and a long term perspective. Yeah. Exactly. Good. Then I have one final question before um, we're going to close the session, um, and this question is. 
um, in all, are all the elements that you presented compulsory? So you talked about machine learning, deep learning, NLP, computer vision, robotics. Is that compulsory or you can, can you just pick and choose? You mean to build the metaverse? Yeah. I, I Definitely, yeah. I think they are going to work together. Yeah, all of them, they are going to work together to build the, to build the data platform. Uh, there are many platforms av uh, currently available, but looking at the graphics, looking at the quality, they are st still in the early stage. So we believe we need like more work. We need more of those generative tools. AI going to play the major role. And using the data that currently that we have to generate those graphics and to make to make that platform to be more interesting and more uh, like interactive. So Great. I will enjoy using it. Thanks for sharing your your insights, Doctor Obey. I I personally thought this was a very very interesting session. Thank you. Um, Thank you. For me, it's always um, kind of conceptual to make sure that you can get towards the metaverse from the big data algorithms that I'm typically used with. So that was very clarifying in terms of that. So thank you so much for contributing your time and your energy again towards big data days. It's a real pleasure to have you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So the next um, speakers are already waiting uh, backstage. Um, we have uh, an almost impossible choice to make for the next hour where we have two tracks. I will be hosting the track from William um, from the Apache Software Foundation, who's going to talk about modern ETLT and orchestration architecture in data ops. And on the other side, we have uh, Paul Colmer from AWS who is going to give a practical hands-on workshop around starting with generative AI. As I said, it's always an impossible choice to make, but um, yeah, look which topic is more in line with your um, experience and more in line with your interests. And um, we're gonna close this session for now. Thank you once again, Dr. Obey, Thank for you so sharing your thought leadership. And I will see you back in seven minutes for the next sessions at Big Data Days. All right, thanks, bye-bye.